What up my fellow villains? In this video I want to share with you 8 advanced pro tips and tricks that I personally use in PUBG. Some of the things I'm going to cover in this video you may already be aware of or use in your own play already, which is great, but hopefully there's something I can show you here that you can take away from this video. Let's do this. Here's the outline of what I will cover in this video. Shooting with a car 98k properly and quick swapping. Using small jumps and quick peeks to gain enemy information. Falling prone mid-fire when spotted. Using nades, red zones, and planes as footstep cover. Reloading prematurely and maintaining pressure on your enemy. Using smokes as cover efficiently. Running flanks effectively. And finally, gatekeeping teams on the edge of the circle. Like I previously stated, some of these tips you may already have knowledge of and use in your own gameplay already, which is awesome. But for those of you who don't, I hope this video can help you in some way. If you'd like to ask me a question about a specific strategy or cover a specific topic in another video, feel free to leave a comment in the section below. Now let me start off the KR-98K, or as I call it, the Kark. But this goes for any of the bolt action rifles. The bolt actions can require some of the most skill and precision to land hits on moving targets, especially at a distance. But sometimes you shouldn't always stay on your cark to finish the job. Typically the times I use the quick swap are when I've connected with my first shot and it isn't a headshot or I've missed too many of my initial sniper shots. Once I've landed a body shot, I will swap to the AR and start laying down suppressive fire on single shot with a hollow or red dot. Or if I have an extra 4 times scope, I will quickly tab to it in my inventory and swap it to my AR and use that. This technique is typically most effective against enemies who are already on the run from either the blue or have to cross large open areas with limited cover. We call this gatekeeping, which I will cover later in the video. At this point in the video, enemies flank us on our left. As you can see, the enemy lines me up and I juke his shot with a quick crouch to dodge incoming bullets. Make no mistake, this is not by accident and are well-timed bullet dodges. Small jukes like this are the difference between life or death, especially when you're caught well out in the open like we are here. Using nades, I keep the enemy at bay and also end up knocking one with it. While the enemy goes for the revive, I'm able to flank left and finish them at the tree. Now for landing those juicy kark shots. Due to the kark's bullet velocity and drop, it can be difficult to hit moving targets. If the target is moving in a linear path, basically not juking, aim well in advance of the target and let them walk into your shot. Let me show you some examples. Nice, we did it. In this situation, the enemy is completely unaware of my presence and is running towards the apartments in a straight line. All I need to do is aim well in advance and let him walk into my crosshair and time it perfectly. This method is much easier to do rather than tracking his full range of movement with my crosshair and timing the shot perfectly. By putting the crosshair stationary and letting the target walk into it removes some of the guesswork your brain has to do, thus making it easier to get those shots. The more you practice this method and fine tune your aiming, you will become quicker at predicting enemy movement and tracking. You will be able to counter enemy jukes by letting them walk into the shot. Even at longer distances, this method can still be effective. In the next section of the video, I'm going to show you some examples of quick peeks and or jumps that will help you gain enemy information to give you that major advantage. Some of this may seem obvious, but it can easily be overlooked in the heat of the moment and can be the difference between getting a dinner or not. Here I do a quick jump to look over the truck and spot my enemy who can hear us coming. Finding out his position allows me to peek out and pre-fire him before he really even has a chance to react. Performing jumps at the top of ridges allows you to expose minimally while getting the information you need. Once an enemy is spotted, you can maneuver yourself into a position to intercept. Guys right down below is close, coming up. Keeping eyes on enemy movements is extremely important. Whether you're peeking windows, ridges, ledges, or walls, it is important to keep your body exposure at an absolute minimum. Do not over peek. And if you were spotted and the enemy starts to fire, do not re peek the same spot. It is always best to move locations and peek again in another spot, even if it's three steps away. This is obviously personal preference, but I have bound my peek left and right to mouse buttons 4 and 5. As I found it is much more intuitive than Q and E, and I like being able to keep my fingers firmly planted on the strafe left and right, while controlling my peek without some weird dexterous finger bending. Give it a try and let me know what you think. Next up is falling prone mid-fire to throw off enemies. You can either do this mid-fire or just before to throw the enemy off. This is not always recommended. 
as it leaves you completely stationary and very vulnerable, but can be used very strategically if timed perfectly. If you are going to prone before you shoot, make sure you have some type of ridge or grass cover in front of you, otherwise your head will be a perfect target for the enemy. I generally only use this trick as a last ditch effort when I'm stuck in a very bad spot, for example when I've run out of bullets or wide open with no cover and the enemy has me dead to rights. In this portion I will go over the strategy behind using planes and red zone as footstep cover as well as grenades. When I have spotted or heard an enemy that is unaware of our presence, I will typically sneak up as close as possible and lead with nades. Obviously the goal is to hopefully knock one with a nade, however with the recent changes to the nades blast radius and no longer throwing targets, they have become a lot less effective for knocks. Nevertheless, you can still use them to confuse and deafen your enemies of your approach. This is typically how I've found them to be most effective lately in the recent patch changes. Nading ridges where enemies are hiding behind will not only push them back off that ridge, it allows you to advance up to the ridge as they retreat further back down the hill. The explosion sound from the blast will mask your footsteps and if it lands near them will deafen them enough so you can walk up freely to that ridge, allowing you to gain position and secure the kills. Me close left. He's in the second house past. Using the plane's engine noise flying overhead is one of my favorite tactics, as you can completely catch people off guard and looking the wrong way. In this example, we hear an enemy team firing at someone else, and judging from the shots, we determine that they are in the building in front of us and make a full push with the noise of the plane. As you can see, the guy is fully unaware of me walking in right beside him. Now I don't have any examples of me doing this in a red zone cover, but uh, the same idea applies. Even if you're not fully inside the red zone and very nearby it, it can mask your footsteps. This is often most common when fighting inside Bichinki as it seems to get a lot of uh, heavy bombardment early game and the strategy is great for urban combat. Now this part of the clip leads me into the next tip I want to cover. I want to point out a fatal mistake this enemy makes and it is an extremely common mistake. I see it time and time again and it ends up being very costly. Do not prematurely reload. Your gun typically has 40 rounds in it if you have an extended mag and 30 if you don't. Use the full mag. If you shoot off a quick burst like 3 to 8 rounds, you still have more than enough left in that mag to kill someone. If you can't kill someone within 10 rounds, you're doing it wrong. Typically, I don't recommend pushing people in buildings because they will always have the camper's advantage. However, if you find yourself in no other scenario, here's what you should do to help even the odds a bit. Pre-fire the edge of corners and use nades to deafen and push enemies back. Here I push this guy to the back of the hallway with my nade. I come around peeking slowly and he drills me extremely low. And just to make note here, I reload like an idiot after firing only 10 rounds. This guy knows he got me low and as any good player knows in this situation, this is when you should maintain pressure. I recognize this fact as well so I do not retreat to heal. I stand my ground and step out as he rushes me. This is also another common mistake uh, I see in some players, is when they take any kind of damage they will immediately seek cover to heal, giving up any advantage or position they might have had, which in turn allows enemy to advance or flank up on them. Determining when the right time to heal will take a lot of situational awareness and only comes from experience. There's more than one way to use smokes. Smokes are obviously extremely useful for teammate revives and also can be used as a guise for crossing areas that your enemy has covered, but there's also some other ways you can use smokes to your advantage. Here I'm pinned down 2v1 inside the shack with pretty much nowhere to run and can easily be surrounded. I lay down a smoke and some nades to keep the enemies back. This allows me to rotate out to a different position than the enemy expects, giving me a small window of opportunity to outmaneuver them. Paying close attention to your surroundings and knowing your movements inside the smoke is the key to pulling this off. Remember, you are just as blind as they are inside. The trick is to come out in an area they are not expecting. Smokes don't necessarily need to be used for cover. They can also be used as a fake grenade to push enemies off a position or move them away from a corner of a building to another, like in this case. Sometimes leading with the smoke will confuse the heck out of them as they will think you have no more grenades left. Plus, not allow them to move as fluidly through the building to escape the grenade blast. Nice. Being effective at flanking is pretty much the key to being successful in PUBG, especially in the late game. I'm going to focus on squads and duos for my guide, but you can also flank people in solo games as well. It just requires a little bit more ingenuity, but the same idea applies. There are three basic things to remember for pulling off a successful flank. First is enemy sight lines. You need to determine the enemy's position, obviously, and try to imagine what your enemy sees from their eyes. It is very important to understand what your enemy can and cannot see, and is probably the most crucial for pulling off a successful flank. 
Knowing the enemy sight lines will allow you to make the correct choice on which route to take. Next is timing. Timing is everything and you need to be very quick with your flanks, especially in squad games. If the route you end up taking is too wide or long, your team might end up getting knocked or worse killed since they are down a man while you're off running way wide. And lastly is communication amongst your squad mates. Make sure you communicate to your team that you're running a flank and which direction you're going. They can hold the angles and give you information as needed. For squads you need to not have multiple teammates flanking at the same time as it will split your squad up too much. I don't always recommend flanking every single time. There is also a large amount of risk when performing a flank. One thing to note is the flanker should typically be left to die if he does end up going down and he should understand the risk of splitting himself from the squad. Game sense and overall ability will determine if you are successful or not as you typically be up against two or more opponents. Keeping low in ridge lines is very crucial when in open areas. You always want to stay off the high points of ridges if you are trying to outmaneuver someone. In duels, it's extremely risky to run a wide flank. It's important to have your partner keep the enemies occupied and distracted. You can even get your partner to peek intentionally so the enemies reveal themselves by firing shots at him. Once you spot them, make sure you take full advantage of them being left wide open and you don't miss. That is the whole point of flanking. Circle RNG is pretty much the nature of PUBG, and sometimes it goes your way and sometimes it does not. When you find yourself mid-game sitting inside the white circle, this is when you should be gatekeeping. Depending on where you decided to hold up, whether it's indoors or outdoors, make sure you have some type of cover from the outer circle coming in, and preferably to the inner side of the circle as well. Mid-game you should always preferably want to center yourself up as much as possible, as it will limit the amount of rotation you or your team has to do towards the end game circle, but if you find yourself on the very edge of the white circle, this is definitely when you should try to gatekeep teams coming in from the blue. Where? Once the circle starts to close on your position, make sure all guns available are looking towards the outer edge of the circle coming in. If you positioned yourself properly, it will be like shooting fish in a barrel. Keep in mind, once the circle finishes, you might have to rotate to another part of the map. You should already be thinking about your next move, even if you're engaged currently. You'll want to make sure the outer edge of the circle is cleared before you push inward. But if you can't clear the outer edge and you have buildings or ridges to separate you from the enemy, sometimes it's better to disengage and gain circle position and displace to another location. You don't always need to kill every enemy you encounter. Sometimes it's better to move to a different location and re-engage later, especially if the distance you need to travel to the next circle is far. Giving yourself time to gain circle position in my opinion is more important than an extra kill if your overall goal is to win the game. Circle strategy is a topic I could go into great detail about, but I believe I will cover it in another video in its whole entirety, as there are a few different ways to play it. And that's it for now. If there's something specific you'd like me to cover in one of my next videos, please feel free to comment below. Also, if you found this video helpful in any way, please give me a like, as every little bit helps. If you want to find me live, I also stream on twitch.tv. Thanks for watching.